Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm George Campbell, joined by my good friend, Ken Coleman. This is your show, America. We are here for you to help you take the right next step with your money, with your work, and with your life. The number to call is 888-825-5225. I'd be happy to chime in on your money questions. And Ken, he is the work career purpose guy. If you feel stuck, you feel like you're not doing what you want to do, you feel like you could be making more money, you're not sure how to have that conversation with your boss or your coworker, Ken is an expert at walking you through those predicaments. And so we're happy to take your call, 888-825-5225. Matt joins us up first in Raleigh. Matt, what is going on, my friend? How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Good. How can we help? Uh, So me and my wife, we've been together for about five years, married for two. Uh, We just found out a little bit ago that we are expecting, and she's about 15 weeks. So we've kind of made some changes in um, kind of our spending habits and being able to save up for uh, when our child is due. Uh, One of the things that came up was uh, saving for college, um, which I'm able to provide that. I'm in the military, and I'm actually going to be passing along my 9-11 GI Bill, which is a full-ride scholarship for that child. Great. Wonderful. Uh, the, other, uh, thing that w- the other thing that we were looking at was a custodial brokerage account when the child is born. Um, me and my wife have been kind of talking about it, uh, doing $100 a month until they're 18, The only thing is, is my wife is concerned that much money when our child turns 18 is going to be too much. Um, I kind of did the math, $100 with a 10% rate of return. By the time they're 18, they'll have $53,000. Just trying to get an insight if that's too much money or... Well, I I personally don't think so. If you just look at the, you know inflation and what things could cost 20 years from now, I, I don't think it would be a waste to be investing for your kid's future, whether it's in a custodial brokerage account or a 529 plan that has tax advantages or an education savings account. Yeah, so we look at the 529. Um, we, we, we think we aren't going to go that route just because I'm able to pass along my post 9-11 GI Bill. Um, it's a full ride scholarship uh, and it includes housing as well. Oh, great! Um, so all expenses are a hundred percent covered. Yeah. And what would the custodial yeah. brokerage account be for then? Uh, more of just having a savings account. Uh, from what I looked at, they once they turn eighteen, it goes into their possession, and they can do whatever they want with it. Um, I, me personally, I've never inherited anything uh, from my parents. Uh, all the uh, income and savings that I have, I've uh, me and my wife have done it together. And so it's just more of a way to get a head start for our child. Um, that way they don't feel like when they turn 18 that they're on their own. Mm. Well, I, I don't think you could have too much then. I've never heard a parent go, well, they had too much to set them up and get the car and get the down payment on the house. I think whatever you put in there is going to be an amazing blessing. And you guys have done a great job already. Gotcha, gotcha. So a hundred dollars is not too much, even. It doesn't sound it like it's putting you guys 000. out to put away twelve hundred bucks a year, is it? No, no. Me, me, and my wife. I mean, we make um, a little over ninety thousand. I already have uh, thirty-eight thousand in a Roth uh, IRA. Are you uh, doing fifteen percent? Uh, so I'm doing ten percent, and the uh, military matches four percent or five percent. The only difference is my ten percent is Roth, and the 5% is traditional. Yes. Okay. I would still up your percentage to 15%. And so if you're investing 15% of $90,000, you're putting away some money for college, then you're attacking the house, that puts you right in line with these baby steps that have helped so many people build wealth. Gotcha. So if you can still do all of that with 100 bucks left over to uh, put away, I think your your kid will be very happy at that surprise. And I think you're going to raise a great kid that's not entitled. Because that's always the fear, Ken, is you go, here's a pile of money. Don't ruin your life. But I think if you raise your kid the right way with the right mindset around college and adulthood, they're not going to ruin their life. They're going to say, thank you for helping set me up for success. And to that end, yeah. and to that end, Matt, I, I don't yeah, know that I would reveal to the child that this money is coming I'd almost make this 
uh, a surprise on their 18th birthday and and raise them in a in a uh, way that they don't know that that money's sitting there. And so they develop grit. They develop hard work. They don't have that sense of entitlement. That would be my only thing. I'd be a great, awesome surprise, but I would not reveal it early. Because, you know, listen... Who among us doesn't change our gear? You know, when if you we, know fifty grand is coming up, why yeah. would you work that part time job for three years? What do you think about that? I, in fact, I, I didn't have a strong opinion on that until you said surprise. You said it'd be a great surprise, and that made me think. I don't know that I would tell the kid. Well, there's a few until schools 18. of thought. You know, Dave did the four hundred one Dave plan with his kids when it came to saving up for a car, and right. so well, he that's would true. he would match. So I think it's good, but that's to, for the car. I'm talking about car. this is like, yeah, uh, you know, they no, they don't have access to their eighteen. Yes. So presumably we got yeah, the car beforehand. I, yeah. What do you think, George? Yeah, I like to hold I, off I, on it. There's no reason to. I mean, they're going to avoid debt. And so it's okay to have a string attached and go, listen, this is the caveat is we're not touching debt. You will not take out any debt. If you do, the the situation's going to change. Mm-hmm. And right now yeah, with college, my, they're like not I going my, to. My, well, yeah, and that's the thing is, I mean, the college is paid for. Now, if we have a second kid, all right, then only half their college is paid for because I'm going to be splitting it up evenly. And if we do have a second child, um, that uh, that's what I was kind of telling towards my wife is, I mean, if they have $50,000, they'd be able to go to college and not have any debt and possibly even leave college with some of that money still left over. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think you're you're making the wise decision because you've got the GI Bill. And the, the cool thing is with the Secure 2.0 Act, you can roll over a portion of funds from a 529 into a Roth IRA over time. And so it's not a, quote, waste. A lot of people just go, well, I'm not going to save for college because what if they don't go? What happens is the kid doesn't have the money to go. They take out six figures in student loans, and then they're trapped with payments. So I love that you guys are thinking through this in a really – wise way, Matt. And I think this kid's they're obviously going to go to college debt-free, but the better thing is they're going to learn money management at an early age. Yeah, and that, that's the goal. That's the goal. I love it. Well, hey, thank you for your service, Matt. And uh, yes, what an inspiring story to see at least one more student becoming a student without a student loan. It yeah. is possible. And sometimes it's the, the GI Bill through the military. It's one of the great benefits. Mm-hmm. If you're a service member and you, you're able to go to school debt-free or your children are able to go to school debt-free and not have that burden of student loans, what an incredible way to set your kid up, Ken, to not be in chains when they graduate. Because then no matter what job they have, they feel broke. That's right. Because they got payments all around them. And I'm one of these guys that's holding out hope. I'll be misty-eyed when the day arrives, George. I think it's going to happen. When we see the current higher ed situation uh, just completely broken up and we see the cost of getting educated back down to way more feasible, true ROI on the amount of money people are spending, and we see the student loan crisis gone forever. That's my hope. Amen. It's supply and demand. Let's just stop paying these colleges exorbitant amounts of money. Exactly. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAM or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Ken Coleman this hour. The number is 888-825-5225. Don't be shy. Don't be scared. Give us a call. We'll walk you Why through. Why would you be scared of us? People are frightened, Ken. Very intimidated Well, by because us. of the live, you know, kind of on the air business. But if you look at us two, I mean, you couldn't be less scarier of two guys. But if you, you can't me. see us, you only hear us. You think, wow, these guys must be intimidating. No, I'm pretty sure that when anybody hears you, they're not intimidated. Fair point. My baritone, maybe. But yours, my tenor? kind of a mousy tenor, <laughs> <laughs> kind of a honey soaked tenor, if you will. Oh, honey soaked! Like I like that? that, dude. That's good. Well, Jack's not scared. He Jack called is in. not. Let's see From what Jack's got going. My hometown. On. Oh yeah, Boston, Boston, Massachusetts. Let's go, Jack. How you doing? Hey, doing well, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? Um, had a quick question here. I'm trying to figure out if I should sell or keep my condo, my primary residence where I'm at now. I recently found out the condo association hasn't been really managed that well over the past 15 years or so. Um, I've been here for about eight, but I just found out that um, there's about $3 million worth of damages on the property in Oof. terms of like a roof that need to be replaced and siding and um, rot and things like that, possibly mold, but they're not sure yet. There's about like 15 buildings on the property that need to be, you know, fixed and everything and repaired. Um, they did have a guy come on site and do a full evaluation assessment of the property and documented all the damage that he found. But I'm just trying to figure out how much of an increase in an HOA fee is too much to the point where as an owner, I should probably think about selling my property or, or just saying put, um, considering how much uh, home prices have appreciated over the years and the high interest rates with mortgages. And I would certainly be taking on more debt than the current mortgage that I have now, which is at about 120000 that I owe currently. So 120000 on the mortgage. And once this these damages are divvied out among all of the uh, homeowners, what do you think it'll be? Right around thirty thousand dollars, if I were to pay it out of pocket up front. And what is um, the stipulations? Can you just pay it over time with no penalty? But you um, can't sell the condo without paying the fee. Right. Pro I'm sure that's probably how it would work. Sure. They're not there yet. They still need to get quotes and everything. Okay. Um, like that, that three million dollar mark is just the preliminary company that came in. They want to get quotes from three others before they bids. take action. Yeah. Oof. And so, what's your current HOA fee? Right now, uh, they just bumped it up to 500 and next year, so like by the end of this year, hopefully they should have a plan in place to repair the damages. That's their goal, the board. Um, and they had like a projection increase over the next 20 years. It would be a 20 year loan that they would take out most likely to do the repairs. Um, and it would, the HOA would max out around the 15 year mark. So somewhere around like 20. 30 something, um, it would be up around like $725. It would cap out at, um, okay. but next year it would be around 600, but this year we're at the $500 mark. Got it. So we're talking about an increase of 1200 bucks a year, potentially, yeah, and then right eventually 2,400 bucks a year plus, but that kind of caps right. out. You're not going to be paying $2,000 in HOA fees. No. Okay. No. So that's what we're talking about here. I just like to put numbers on it to give me some real facts because uh, this does stink and it happens all over. And you're right. A lot of HOAs are not managed well and things like this happen and it gets passed on to the homeowners, of course. So not fun to deal with, but this is part of uh, part of life as a homeowner you get to deal with. So what is your mortgage outside of the HOA fee? What is that up to? Uh, like the monthly payment? Yes. It's about $888 principal and interest. Okay. And then month. what is your take-home pay after taxes per month? Um, take-home, I think I'm right around maybe 3300 Okay. So as a percentage of your income, that mortgage plus the HOA, it's taken up a good chunk. Right. You know, when you look at uh, 1388 out of 3300 it's 42% of your take-home pay right now is going toward this house. And so as that goes up, you know, it could creep up to 50% of your income is going toward this house, which is then going to be hard to invest for the future, hard to live your life. Are you feeling that pain right now? 
Um, not so much right now. Um, I'm, I'm pretty frugal. I try to save as much as I can. Um, but I'm definitely concerned about the future, especially as the HOA fee creeps up to 600 by 2025, potentially. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Once you put numbers to it and you add this into your budget, the extra, you know, 50 bucks a month they're going to start charging is not going to crush you. That's 600 bucks a year. Correct. Correct. So it's not fun yep. to pay the extra six hundred bucks a year, then eight hundred bucks a year, but it's not it's not worth. Let's go ahead and sell the condo today because you might have to deal with more HOA fees and higher HOA fees elsewhere if you went and sold and bought another property, especially in the Boston area. Because my brother's got a condo in the Boston area and he he knows this life well. These are some old condos that have not been taken care of very well. So Jack, yeah. if I'm in your shoes, I'm gonna hold off. Is what I'm telling you right now. It's not worth it to save 600 bucks a year. I would rather you go make more money. So how can we get your income up to where this isn't as big of an issue? What are you doing for work? Um, yeah, I work in at a health insurance company. Okay. How long have you been there? Um, I've been there about two years. Okay. Are you making a, around 50K? What is the actual gross salary? So the actual gross salary, and I might have messed up the take-home pay figure there um, after taxes, but I gross about 80K a year. Oh, great. That's good. So What's promotion look yep. like for you? Um, that's a little bit uncertain at the moment. The company's kind of going through a restructure, um, so I might be at that salary for a little bit while. Okay. Longer. Well, and again, but you're a young man, and you've got, you got plenty of option, plenty of energy. And to George's point, at this season of your life— uh, that that gig, you know, the gig economy right now where people are using their professional skill set, which you have plenty, uh, to make uh, money on the side, you know, and contract labor. Uh, look, you know, that's the way you get more margin right now. And if you want more margin, go get it, you know, and you may get to a certain point where you go, okay, I'll do it for six months, I'll do it for 12 months, I'll do it for 18 months to save X amount of dollars. It's not a bad idea if you've got the margin relationally to to be able to do it yeah and jack when you do if you did choose to sell you got to also think about the fees that you're going to pay to sell it the fees you're going to pay to buy a new condo yeah. moving costs so there's a lot of other figures to factor in that i think would outweigh the extra 600 bucks you're going to pay in the next year so and down the line if you want to move because of other reasons you can move but i would stay put for now but what do you think is going to happen on the other side of the improvements if he stays like you and i agree with you he should stay but i think he benefits i mean sure he's going to pay more in hoa but then you know if he sells it down the road i would imagine these improvements are going to help his sales price you would hope one would hope especially in the boston area and i'm sure even in the eight years jack you've been there the condo is appreciated correct correct yep so that's a win right there. I like that's the other thing I was going to mention. I like the uh, benefit of the improvements. If you hold, like George says, and I think George is right for every point he makes, but I'd add that to it. You're going to benefit from that. You know, think of it as an investment in your uh, resale value. And even paying the you know thirteen hundred total with HOA and the mortgage, that's still pretty reasonable for a metro city like Boston. <laughs> Incredible to have your reasonable. own place. So you you've done this really uh, smart, Jack, and I'm proud of you for living on less than you make. That's the key to this whole thing. Do you have any debt? I don't. No, I okay. just paid off um, thirty three grand over the summer for my student loans. Wow, way to go, man. Jack! Way to go, yeah. man. You How's got... that feel? It felt awesome. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. <laughs> I'm I'm proud of it. You got oh, an emergency it. fund as well, totally three to six it. months? I do, yep. Right. And you're investing in your retirement plans? Yep. Look at that. I have one more question. Jack, are you born and raised or, or been in the Boston area a long time? No, I'm, uh, well, I grew up in the uh, New Hampshire area, so north of Boston by about an hour. All right, Still a New Englander. The reason I ask is because you and George both, you'd never know that you've lived a long time in that area. I'm pretty impressed with the lack of accent. We lose it, Ken. We are chameleons. We can bring it up when we want to. I Give can me say, an example. Take us to break in, in Boston. Bostonian. Dude, you've been in the Red Sox game? Dude, it's wicked sick, dude. Poppy just smashed one to the, to the Green Monster. <laughs> there it is. A PG you, for you, the actually, show. you actually have to know about baseball to finish that, but I it was good. I almost lost it at Green Monster. I that like one you got to get for Fenway. Monster. This like is it. the Ramsey Show.
Hey guys, I've told you before about Christian Healthcare Ministries, a health cost sharing ministry. But listen to Jenna, a CHM member. She says, one of my biggest concerns about entrepreneurship and motherhood was figuring out how to take care of our health expenses. But we have found a solution that works for us in an incredible way. She loves that with CHM, she can help other families who need it and receive help back when her own family has an eligible medical event. CHM has been a godsend for Jenna. That's her CHM story, and it could be yours. Learn more and join at chministries.org slash budget. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Ken Coleman. And Ken and I are going to be at a brand new event that we've got coming up May 10th and 11th right here in Nashville, Tennessee called Total Money Makeover Weekend. I know there's millions of you out there. You've been listening for a while. Maybe you're still sitting on the sidelines. Well, no more sitting around. You got to take action. So in just one weekend, you're going to get a crash course on everything we teach about money. We've got all brand new content, new talks from all of the Ramsey personalities, including Dave Ramsey, on budgeting, beating debt, investing, making more money, and so much more. So no matter what baby step you're on, if you're just getting started, maybe you're even at baby step seven and you're looking for ways to build wealth and give generously, this event will light a fire under your butt to keep going, to keep making progress. We've also got some special things happening during the event. We've got a live Smart Money Happy Hour recording on Friday night. That'll be a blast. We've got live Q&As throughout the weekend, which is one of my favorite things to witness from our friend Ken Coleman. When he dives in with one person in the crowd, it is magic. So you don't want to miss this. Our events are actually fun. These are not boring. We've got musical experiences. Our team is world class. So early bird tickets start at just 99 bucks, but they're going to keep going up. This is the cheapest you're going to find them. So get your tickets now, RamseySolutions.com slash events, and make plans to join us, Nashville, Tennessee, May 10th and 11th, RamseySolutions.com slash events. And we're kicking around some fun ideas, you know, that may or may not make it, you know. Is this you pitching to get on Smart Money Happy Hour Well, again? I've already done that. I already did that last week, and I'm not going to pitch it again. So you brought it up, but that's what people want. I knew it was ruminating in that little no, mind No, I've got another yours. idea that you and I, you know, a lot of guys uh, don't care what they wear. Their wives care what they wear. Yes. What if we had a special bonus session? You and I lead it, couples only, and we t- we kind of help the wives out, and we call it total clothing makeover. And the wives will volunteer their husbands to parade on stage, and we will judge their fashion and give them some tips. Yeah. So this is good content. Uh, we'll give them tips, and then you'll help them do it on a budget. This is actually good, Ken. Maybe I, you start I th- with Deloney. We could start, we with, could start with John. Thank you, James. Everybody the knows that guy needs a total clothing makeover. I mean, first of all, would it kill him to dress like a doctor? I think we all have that teenager that dresses like Deloney in our lives, yeah. you know? I, but listen, I, I, I actually make no fun of it because you know what? The guy doesn't have to make a lot of decisions. That's true. You and I, on the other hand, we're stewing every morning. Which we're tall stewing. cardigan are we going to throw on this morning? Hey, I haven't rocked a cardigan in a while, but you know what? I'll do it next time we're on together just so you can take shots at oh, it. Oh, that's fun. We have a good time. We do. We enjoy it, and we're going to have a good time helping people out. Who's up next? Well, it's time for the neighborly question of the day. Oh, Ken. the neighborly question of the day. That's right. Yeah, don't get too excited. I this is a really good one. I'm excited I to know. get your input. So then okay. Ramsey Show question of the day brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Neighborly.com slash Ramsey is the place to go. You can download their winter maintenance checklist, completely free and full of tips to get your home through the colder months with no issues. Again, you can check it out at Neighborly.com slash Ramsey. Today's question comes from Billy in Indiana. Ten years ago, I was destitute. And owed $15,000 to the IRS. I raised my kids by myself with no contribution from my ex-wife. I followed your teachings, and I'm now debt-free with money in savings and investments. I'm retired and living very frugally, but I'm terrified of being destitute again. My weekly grocery budget is, am I reading this right, $35? I don't use the AC in the summer and won't turn on the heat in the winter. This is from Billy in Indiana. Uh, He turns it on when it gets below freezing. Yikes. I've taken all the light bulbs, but one out of all the fixtures in the house. I take three-minute showers and haven't eaten out in two years. How do I live without my phobia 
of being broke again. Man, this is intense. But I but let me just say, destitute. It's a heavy word. The kids, the youngsters, stories behind don't know that. what that word means. But it takes down and out to a new level. And I think that um, him having nothing at all so seared his conscience. Yeah, I mean, this is as much emotional, is, relational as it is financial. I do, and I because he this has is money therapy. Now. I think this is some. I think I would get some therapy on this to be able to create a narrative that is uh, in opposition to the voice of fear because the voice of fear is rooted in tremendous pain, George. Mm. And so you've got to counteract that. This, again, Deloney's not here, but the bottom line is this is a form of OCD. And, And OCD is anxiety, and I'm not in any way diagnosing him with OCD, but I'm saying it feels like he's so obsessed with saving money that you're talking about $35 yeah, I mean, a week, this, not using the air conditioning. I've seen this episode of Extreme Cheapskates. These people do not have thrilling, joyful lives. They're terrified. They're something. terrified. And so I would start with, wow. I think Ken's spot on here. Uh, Billy, you need to go to therapy and deal with the past. And a good start is reading our friend Dr. John Deloney's book, Own yep. Your Past, Change Your Future, because you're not there anymore. Yes, you're right. doing well now. And so we tell people to make a budget, and actually look at how much margin you have and force yourself to go out and eat once a week. Force yourself to go be generous. We found that generosity can unlock something when it comes to that destitute mindset, and it will make you have an open hand when it comes to money. So I would start to give, save, spend in each area. You're great at saving, and that muscle has been flexed, but you got a flat tire when it comes to giving and spending. So I would increase both of those, force it in your budget, And the other thing I would do is get people around you. You sound like you're isolated, like you're living like a recluse. Start making some community. Get plugged into a local church. Hang out with family and friends. That's going to help you break out of this. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this is just overcoming the trauma and then beginning to uh, get the tools to get over it. But then then you got to take some steps and go, okay, what if? What if I spend $150 a week on groceries? Is it going to tank you? No. Can you? But but I think the fear is so great here that even seeing it on paper, I don't know that that's going to solve it. Well, stair step it. We're going to spend 40 bucks this week, 45 the next week yeah. until you're spending a reasonable amount. I yeah. mean, this sounds like it's affecting your health. Yeah. If you're living in a 34 degree house eating literal rice and beans, that's frightening. So, uh, Billy, we're we're wishing you the best, man. But you got to take some steps to knock yourself out of this vortex. Sorry to hear you're going through that. All right, let's go to the phones. Janice is in Orlando. Janice, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Hey. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, to give you some background, well, I'm 58 years old, divorced. I work full time. Um, I have no debt. I hey, Janice. Phone. Janice, sorry to interrupt uh, you. Could you maybe adjust your phone? You sound a bit muffled. Oh, okay. Is this better? A little bit better. Go ahead. Okay. So 58, divorce, you're working full time. Yes, no debt. Um, I have an emergency fund, so I'm currently saving for retirement as well. Um, the problem is I currently rent out a studio, and um, with rents increasing the way they have been, I'm getting a little nervous, and I'm wondering if at 58, is that... Um, is that a good age to maybe purchase a condo? Um, I don't want to get into a situation where the rents get too high and I'm not able to pay it, basically. I think now is a great time if you have the money. and you. I think now is a great time if you have the money and you can put down the down payment and you're able to cover this mortgage. It's no more than a quarter of your take-home pay. That's how you know you're making a right decision. But I think you're right. I would rather you have a fixed cost and pay off that house so that you can retire with dignity without these rising costs of rent weighing you down in retirement. So how much Mm -hmm. money do you have saved outside of the emergency fund? Um, Outside, well, the emergency fund, I have 30K. Okay. But you haven't started on the down payment savings? Uh, No. Okay. I would begin there. How much money can you put away every month for this down payment now? Well, 
Um, let's see. Um, I have uh, 30K in, in my emergency fund, which may be a little too much. Um, total um, money that I have is uh, the last time I checked, which was two days ago, 117000 um, Is that in retirement, though, or is that liquid cash in the bank? That's everything. Um, okay. 30 is liquid. And then the rest is uh, split between a 401k uh, and a Roth. Okay, I don't want you touching those retirement accounts. We need to build up money outside of that with future income. And so that's what I would do. Increase your income, put that money aside. When you're ready, reach out to a Ramsey Trusted Real Estate Agent at RamseySolutions.com. And we're wishing you the best with the home ownership journey. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com and save up to 35% off everything site-wide. That's Blinds.com to learn more. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Ken Coleman. If you like this show, be sure to check out all of the shows on The Ramsey Network, including The Ken Coleman Show, which films right next door to The Ramsey Show, which is fun. And, of course, uh, The Smart Money Happy Hour. I co-host with Rachel Cruz and my YouTube channel. We're having a good time over there, Ken. Breaking records around here. People are enjoying the YouTube content. Well, so that's I mean, good. your team's doing a great job, and, and you obviously are, are really great for that quick, snippy... You know, entertaining. You're just perfect for YouTube. That means the world. I think I'm you've... being serious. Well, I've got a face for radio, and I think YouTube is the next best place for people who don't have a f- the face. You know, you can make it as a YouTuber out there. You don't have to be good looking. You just got to be good. That's the best encouragement I could ask for from Ken Coleman today. I like that. I think you're a good looking guy. I, you're t- I'm trying to compliment you I'm here. I'm not and fishing. You're, you're 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 what? I'm not fishing for compliments. I know you're not, but I'm just saying. I'm not surprised that the channel is doing great. I think it's Thank fantastic. You. Very happy for. We you. have a great team here. All right, let's get to the phones before we get in a massive fight. CJ, <laughs> break this up, my friend. How can we help you today? <laughs> Hey, George. Hey, Ken. Um, so I'm a 21-year-old, and I've just accumulated about $90,000 from a sign-on bonus uh, for becoming a professional baseball player. And Woo. I, w- my goal is I'm just trying to maximize this money and kind of set myself up for, you know, an, an easy, easier road down the line. Nice. And so I just don't really have a starting point, and I just want to get some advice for what to do with this money. Congrats. Yeah. Okay, so let's well, talk you about, so you said you're 19? Uh, 21. 21. 21. Okay. Yeah. 21 years old. This is the most money you've ever seen in your life, I imagine. Yeah, it's uh, it's more than I know what to do with, for sure. Good. It should take your breath away just a little bit. Not cause you to go in paralysis mode, but enough to pause and go, breathe. Yeah, now, have I you, def- have you already gotten it? breath every time I see it. Let's be, so so yeah. is it in your savings account right now? It is. It's just sitting there. Okay. Okay, cool. So let's talk through your financial situation. Um, do you have any debt? No, I'm I'm debt free. Nice uh, emergency fund, three to six months. Yep, that's a, it's included within that. Wonderful. Okay, so you already have no debt and a pile of money in the bank, regardless of the ninety k, or is this on top of that? 
No, uh, the, that's it. As well, okay. I mean, I have a, a checking account with like my. Uh, I keep my weekly pay or my biweekly pay in that checking account. Just use that. Great. So, how right. much will you be making going forward? Uh, it's about a thousand dollars. It's about two thousand dollars a month going forward. Okay. Do you get also expenses taken care of, or are you required to take care of your own expenses? Uh, yes, for the next five months at least, my living is taken care of. Uh, two out of three of my meals are taken care of. And so I really, my only expenses right now are groceries, gas, and whatever I want to do for fun. All right, what happens after the five months? Because this is going to dictate what George is going to coach you on. What happens after that five months? Um, I would either have to move back well, right now I'm renting out a house, so I would have to either move back into the team-sanctioned hotel or I would uh, be set up at an apartment complex at, like, one of our affiliates where I'd be playing. And when you say and set so up, are they paying living, for it? Living, yes, my living can be taken care of after this next five months. Okay, Great. good, 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 good. All right. As well as meals? You know, at least two out of three, yeah. Okay. That's good. So that's going to really limit your expenses going forward, which is wonderful, as long as you have this career. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, right. well, without getting into the particulars, he's in the early stages. So, as far as professional baseball yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a, he's got a, quite a path. Yeah, if yeah. if things get better, I mean, you're in the minor leagues right now, I'm guessing. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah, so as he moves up, obviously he could get a really large contract. But as long as he's in the minors, the actual pay is not very big. Yeah. So – Right, um, it could be a very long journey, so I would just. So the sign-on bonus is great, but we house. also have to manage this well because you may end up needing some of this. That's correct. Down the line. Sorry, oh, CJ, sure. I'm, I'm catching him up on this. That helps me. Ken yeah. is my sports uh, yeah, historian. Yeah. He helps me with this stuff. <laughs> well, thank you, Ken. So you, you're in a great place financially already. Are there expenses coming up that you know you're going to have to pay for, like a car repair or upgrading the car, things like that? Uh, a flight. I know I'm definitely gonna have to pay for a flight soon, but that's, okay. I mean, that's three to four hundred bucks. Great. So the key here is we got to continue living on less than we make. We don't want to go use this sign-on bonus to just go buy a ninety thousand dollar car and vacation. What about taxes? Uh, taxes are another thing we have to be thinking about. Is this going to be taxable income? I assume you're gonna owe twenty five, thirty percent on, forty percent. Uh, it's, it's already been, it's been taxed already, but oh, I'm still learning, I'm still learning tax and everything. So I'm sure there's something I'll have to pay. I would connect road. with a, a Ramsey trusted tax pro at RamseySolutions.com, and they can help coach okay. you through this to make sure. Cause what I don't want is you wake up to a huge tax bill that you're not prepared for that eats up all of this money. Right. right. So for now, right. CJ, I'm going to leave this in a high yield savings account. And I would continue to invest out of your paychecks. Is there some sort of retirement plan provided, or are you on your own for that? I'm on my own for that. Okay. And for that, you may want to reach out to a, a SmartVestor Pro. These are investing pros that can help you with the investing journey. But a Roth IRA is always a great place to start when you have earned income, as long as you're not above the income limit. And so you could fund one of those with this 90000 to just get a head start if you haven't been investing at all. Okay. And if you yeah, look, no, I haven't been investing at all, so a Roth IRA is a good place to start. Roth IRA, yes. And as yeah, long as you're, yeah. I, I imagine you're under the income limit right now, you could be getting close with this 90K sign-on. So again, check on your growth, your adjusted gross income for the year. And if you're able to contribute to that, that's a great place to start. I believe for 2024, it's now $7,000 you can contribute a year. And within that, the Roth IRA is just a shell, CJ. You want to actually buy funds within that. And I would not recommend single stocks. What you're looking for here is good growth stock mutual funds. And uh, our team will send you a resource for that. I've got a video called Investing for Beginners on YouTube that walks through all of this. And that will help you out immensely as you start this journey. But at 21, CJ, if you continue to live on less than you make, you invest 15% of your income, you never touch debt, you're going to be so unbelievably wealthy, and you're just getting started with this career. Yes, right. So thank you all so much for the uh, for the advice. I'll look into Roth IRAs, and not the single stock, but what's the other one? Mutual funds. Growth stock mutual, mutual funds. Fund. is what you're, That just means a giant pool of stocks, like 90 to 200 stocks in one bucket so that you're diversified because you don't want all of your eggs in one basket when it comes to investing. Right. And okay. uh, well, CJ, you, can I, you don't have to answer like this. Down. You don't have to answer this. I got to ask, are you, uh, are you allowed to tell us your position or would you rather not? 
Yeah, I'm a pitcher. Oh, there I was wondering. Go. So, okay, what's your best pitch? What's your go-to pitch? That's a fastball, baby. That's a fastball. Yeah, the high heat. Yeah, I know about the fastball. Do you know about the fastball? I played a little uh, MLB 2000 back in my day, Ken. <laughs> CJ knows what's up. There you go. CJ, man, that's awesome. Listen, man, we're, we're cheering for you. And yeah. uh, George, let me tell you this. If CJ keeps advancing as a pitcher... We're talking. He's going to call back one day with a some, lot of zeros. He's going to be like, "I'm lot. buying my seventh rental property." Let me tell you, George, the pitchers make the big bucks. That's the, I'm proud of him. Yeah, I good job, CJ. Well, keep at it, buddy. Well, Take you, care of your body. Yeah. Ignore all your buddies who are like out buying really expensive stuff because they That's just got right. the signing bonus. That's going to be the hardest part for you is avoiding the distractions. I agree. And to help you with that, I'm going to send you a copy of my brand new book called Breaking Free from Broke. There's a great chapter on investing traps in there. There's a chapter called Wealth is Patience. It's going to teach you all the stuff I just outlined. So I hope that helps you along this journey and helps you avoid mistakes. This is the book people wish they read when they were 21, CJ. So hang on the line. Austin's going to pick up. We will send you a link to the investing for beginners video as well as a copy of my book breaking free from broke all right honest question george how fast what's the fastest pitch that you think you could even just get the bat around and touch the ball forget hitting it solid just you could get around on it and and make contact how fast what's the fastest oh like if someone threw a, a 70 mile per hour pitch yeah you're have saying you been I paying attention to what we've been talking about yeah i mean i'm gonna be modest what do you think What's the fastest pitch you think you can hit? 40 miles per hour. 40 miles an hour. Is that reasonable? That's ridiculous. You're saying I couldn't do it. You should be able to. 40 miles an hour is not that fast. I wanted to go modest. Well, that was ridiculous. What could you hit? Could you hit a 70? I'm going to say I could get around on 70. For sure I could get around on it, whether I hit it squarely. I think I could still probably hit an 80 mile an hour pitch. We'll see. I think we should. uh... I play a lot of pickleball. Let's hit the old diamond, Ken. Let's see what you got. Let's do it. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. I'm George Camel. He's Ken Coleman. We'll be back before you know it. build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm Ramsey Personality, George Camel, joined by my esteemed colleague, Ken Mm. Coleman. Esteemed today. Very esteemed, and we are so pumped to take your calls about money, about work, about your life. 888-825-5225. If you've got a question about that job opportunity, the job you feel stuck in, what you're really meant to do, what you're wired to do. Ken is the man for those questions, and he can expertly guide you through that. If you need to just make more income, we talk about how your greatest wealth building tool is your income. Yes. And if you need more shovel, because uh, you got the big hole, you, you're in some debt, and Ken can help you make more money and find some opportunity for you there. So uh, we are here for you to serve you this hour at 888 5225. Lydia is up first in St. Louis. Lydia, what is happening? Hi. Hi, thank you for taking my call. I just had um, a question. We are, my husband and I currently have our own business. Um, and in addition to that, he just took up a part time job at our church. Now that he's on staff, they have offered us um, a free house to live in, you know, as long as he has a job. Um, And so we do currently own a house. We got a really good interest rate on it, um, like 2.4%. And so we kind of hate to let it go, but we do not have savings other than $1,000 in an emergency fund. And um, we currently have $20,000 of debt. So we're trying to figure out what the smartest move for us would be. Is this our chance to um, just, you know, pay off all of our debt and just kind of get it in a better situation and then just save the money that we make off of the sale of the home to eventually buy another home when we're in a better financial situation. Is it worth taking the risk to rent our house out without any savings? Um, just what would be the smartest move? How much equity do you have in the home? 
If we sell it right now, we would make 30000 And that's after fees? Yes. Okay. And that would pay off your debt and give you half an emergency fund, most likely? It would pay off the debt, and we would have 10000 left over. Okay. And I'm guessing three to six months of expenses for you guys is in the ballpark of 15 to 20, based on your expenses? Um, it would be, yeah, like 30, probably. Okay. So it would definitely speed up your progress along the baby steps. And uh, I do agree with you that you're adding a lot of risk by becoming, you know, landlords here while having zero in the bank. That's going to be real stressful making that transition. And so I understand you don't want to let go of the the lower interest mortgage rate, but you're just going to add stress on the other side. And so I do think it's a clean slate for you guys just to live in this house, get some financial footing, and there's always going to be another house down the line. Uh, But you're going to be in a different financial position. You're going to have way more to put down. You're not going to be as worried about the interest rate because you're going to be able to pay that house off really early. So I like this plan of just getting rid of this thing and moving on with your life and figuring out down the line. Now, this free housing, is there a stipend or if you don't take it or is it just free housing or you don't take it? It's completely free. And if we don't take it, then we just don't take it. There's no additional benefit. Got it. And does it cover... Utilities as well? Everything. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's hard to pass up. Yep, I would do right. it. I would list the <laughs> house for this a, afternoon. That's for a part-time <laughs> job at the church they're offering this? Yes. <laughs> Goodness. Um, that's amazing. So my other my other question then, if we were to sell the house, um, are you saying that we should take the sale, like the money that we would make off of the sale of the house and put that just directly toward debt? Or we're projected to pay off our debt by the end of this year as is, um, or should we just keep paying our debt as we are, and then after that? As soon as that money hits your account, account you're, it's, you're never going to see the money, essentially. It's going to go towards the debt, and the, whatever's left is going to go sit in a high-yield savings account as your um, starter emergency fund as you continue to build it. Yeah, and Lydia, let's walk through the numbers you just gave us. If you pay the $20,000 off, you still have 10000 You said you're on track to pay the 20000 off by the end of 2024, and you said 30000 was the number. So that means we're debt-free instantly, and then by the end of the year, we have a fully funded emergency fund. That's okay. the order. That's the way we that George and I would do that. Do you understand? Yes. That's great. You're getting to freedom and stability faster by doing it this way. Okay. And I don't think it's worth the risk of renting this place out. You're not going to make much spread probably because of the mortgage and what you're going to rent it for on top of one thing going wrong and you guys can't cover it, putting you further into debt. Because the first time they do something or you can't prove they did it or something happens, guess who pays for that repair? Us, of course. (laughs) Sell the house immediately. Immediately upon deposit, as George said, pay off the 20000 Put 10 in savings and keep going on the debt plan, except now that's going into savings to get us to three months of expenses or three to six, whatever it is. And then now you guys are rocking and rolling and oh, keep, yeah. just keep stacking cash in the form of baby step four. Uh, once you get to that stage, while you're getting that free housing, come on. This is a great situation. All right. Let's go to Alexander in Dallas. Alexander, welcome to the show. Hello. Um I was calling to ask you a question. Uh, I'm trying to pay off my car. I'm not exactly sure if I should just keep chipping away at it or not, or if I should um, do some other drastic move to get rid of that. I currently owe 20 on it, and it's worth about eight or 9000 Okay. And that's uh, almost all the debt I have. I have like 300 other dollars in debt. All right. What car is this? It's a 2015 Subaru Forester. And have you checked Kelly Blue Book private party value? Yes, the uh, private party value is about twelve or so. Okay, uh, and the and the trade in is about eight or nine. Yeah, I, that's that's my issue. Is trade ins you're you're not going to get high dollar for this. And so if, the closer we can get to the amount of loan that you owe, the better. So how much money do you have in the bank right now? I currently have a thousand dollars, about okay. or something like that. But that's all. Uh, set aside for expenses and stuff. And what is your income? Uh, it's about 40000 so about um, 4000 a month. Oof. 
you bought a lot of car for making 40000 Yeah, I bought it when I was making less, so... <laughs> Whew. Yeah, we need to get rid of this thing, but you're going to need to come up with the difference that you're underwater on. So you've got two options to do this. One is you can go to your, your credit union or go to the place that holds the loan and say, listen, you got some bad collateral here because this thing's worth nine. I owe 20. Can you give me an $11,000 loan to make up for the difference? And I get rid of this car. Now, obviously, you need another car. So you probably need to save up a few thousand dollars before you do this. The other option is you go out and save up six, seven thousand dollars to cover the difference yourself with cash, which is a great option, but it may take a little while as you continue chipping away. But there's no fun way to do this. Either way, this car has got to go. I would not hang on to it. All right. Sorry for the bad news, Alexander, but those are your two options. So I would try to get that personal loan to at least eliminate some of this debt and get out of this car, underwater car. But either way, it's going to involve some sacrifice and uh, it's an expensive lesson to learn. But man, car loans are killing people with these underwater situations, Alexander. Hate to hear that you're going through it. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, Ramsey Solutions started small and grew fast. Because of that rapid growth, there were times when our systems slowed us down. That's why we switched to NetSuite. It works for us and it'll help your business too. Whether you're starting on a card table like I did or you're well on your way to becoming a multi-million dollar company, NetSuite can scale with you and help you communicate and plan better. Because you know your day-to-day -day up and down and sideways, but accounting, analytics, and supply chain are on another level. So maybe you're just not tech savvy. That can be okay. NetSuite will help at your speed and whatever your situation. More than 37,000 companies use NetSuite to know their numbers and their business better. So check out NetSuite today and find out how they can help you become the business you want to be five or 30 years from now. And right now, you can download NetSuite's free KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Ken Coleman. Hey, if you enjoy the show, we'd love if you do us a favor and share it. Subscribe wherever you're listening. Hit the follow button. Leave us a review and just tell people about it. Maybe that's a text. Maybe you hit the little share button and uh, send a link to a certain episode or clip that you loved. But you guys are the best marketing plan we could ask for. And it's one of the reasons we hit number one out of all podcasts on Apple Podcasts that earlier. The fact that my mom uh, figured out a way to hack the system and clicked on the thumb a lot. That's amazing. Yeah, Barb. I need to ask Barb how she accomplished yeah, that. I don't know. I don't know if she wanted her boy to, to hit it, hit the big time. So Just her and May Camel, just would... really hitting that like and subscribe button. How is it that Barb and May have not Barb, met? they need to. They'd get along. They really would. Mellifluously. Is that a word? Is it ever? Mellifluously? You're welcome. No, mellifluously. Mellifluously. Yeah. Boy, I got to tell you, you, you've been working hard because I don't ever remember you pulling a word out. If I can teach I don't an old dog a new vocabulary word, I'm doing something right. All right, I'm going to look that up on the commercial break. But Jordan awaits. Or what are we doing right now? Are we doing a little, do we have a little 401k yeah, thing? Yeah, I have a little teaching segment. I'm getting segment. excited right now. Oh, I apologize, George. Teach away. Don't jump the gun here. So here's the deal, Ken. We get this question a lot. And I wanted to address it because a lot of people are going through this right now. They're leaving jobs. We've seen a huge migration of just people moving around. What do I jobs. do with my 401k? What do I do that with I the left 401k? left behind? Yes. Oh, this is a big question. So it's a, it's a big one and it's an important one that has a lot of zeros on the end. So I want to walk people through the thought process uh, when it comes to rolling over the 401k. So, of course, you have a bunch of options. Number one is cash out your 401k, which is a terrible idea because you're gonna pay taxes and penalties if you're not of retirement age. The other option is do nothing and leave the money in your old 401k. Also a terrible idea, probably in second place in the terrible idea list. The other two options are you can roll over the money into your new employer's plan, 
So if you have an old 401k, you got a new job, you can roll it directly into the new employer's 401k. And then finally, the last and probably my favorite option is you can do a rollover into an IRA, which is outside of an employer. And so I like that one the best, Ken, because it gives you the most control over your investing options. Yep. The IRA basically has unlimited options, whereas your 401k has a fewer more select options. All right, so let's play this out. <clears throat> Excuse me. I leave company ABC, and I have a 401k there. And so I take a job with another company, and they've got a 401k plan. I'm going to go to my um, to my Smart Investor Pro, my the person who handles my, my, my retirement. I'm going to say, all right, I need to take my, my old 401k. I need to roll that over into an IRA. And I'm going to jump right in immediately with the new 401k. Yeah. And so that 401k from the previous company is going to grow. You're just not contributing to it, but it's going to sit in that amount in the IRA. Or can you choose to contribute to it in the IRA form? So with, you know, that's called a rollover IRA. Right. So that is an option where you, that money continues to grow. You can continue to contribute. And so that is a, a solid option because of the amount of control you have over your investments. And I like that one the best because as a bucket, when you think about your retirement plan, it's good to have different buckets. Right. And if it's, here's the big thing though, people don't think about. If you had a Roth, if you had a traditional 401k plan and you decide, hey, I'm going to do a rollover to a Roth IRA. You don't want to do that because that's there's going to be a Roth conversion that you pay. That's right. And the only time you should do that is when you're in baby step seven. You have a paid for house. Now this is extra money you have laying around. Right. And you can pay the tax burden to basically conter- convert that to tax-free yeah. money. There's no purpose in, in, in taking a 401k and putting it in a Roth because you're going to pay a tax. And that's the whole purpose of having a Roth is to get it out later with no tax. You want that money to grow tax-free. Exactly. And so there's a time and place to do that, but you're going to pay a hefty fee right. in order to and do that. And that's why we do the IRA. And you want to do a direct rollover. So let's say you have a traditional 401k. You want to do a direct rollover to a traditional IRA. Right. If you have a Roth 401k, you can do a direct rollover to a Roth IRA. So right. you want to keep them equally yoked, if you will. I like that. To keep that. it biblical for there, you, Ken. I that, know you like that reference. Thank you. Thank you for the reference. So if you've got the old one, it's time... And uh, you, you got to do something. Don't just leave it sitting out there. You don't have control over it. The fees are now eating up what was left of your nest egg there. So do something. Roll it over to the new employer or roll it over roll direct. Roll it, roll it, roll it. Direct is what you want. Not indirect, Ken, direct. Yeah, To direct. avoid uh, any fees. Equally you, yoked. You don't want to see that money. Yeah. That's the important part. So if you have questions about this, you can, of course, ask your employer and HR department, but you can also get an investment pro in your corner. And uh, if you go to RamseySolutions.com, our SmartVestor program can get you in touch with someone who can help you with this rollover process. That's something I did, Ken, when I worked at uh, Ramsey. Mm-hmm. I had an old 401k from my Apple retail days. And so they helped me roll that over into an IRA, and that money's been growing ever since. From a Roth 401k, direct yeah. rollover, Roth IRA. I love it. And it's been growing with uh, with my control. So I love it. No reference to my rolling, roll it, roll it, nothing. I didn't want to acknowledge it, to be honest. Why? It Was that an old Walmart ad? No, Keep those it's price. not an old Walmart ad. It's just an, is it an old Walmart ad? Keep those ad? prices no, rolling. I heard is the a next Limp line. Biscuit reference. <laughs> it's not Limp Biscuit. Joe, Joe knows. It's an old song. Uh, rawhide. Uh, like rawhide? a Western. Rawhide. It was a Western rawhide. Yeah, oh. like an old. I mean, George, you wouldn't know what it is because you don't even know who John Wayne is, but I digress. Yeah. No, it so is Rawhide Walmart, by Frankie Limp Lane. Biscuit and Rawhide. We just all, went the whole guesses. range there, but uh, that's what I do. I like to create good conversation over absolutely nothing. I think that tells you the the zeitgeist that we were born into, Ken. You're mentioning songs from 1961, and I'm thinking oh, of the old- Oh, did you pull it up? Yeah. Well, give them the full reference now. People want to know. Rawhide by Frankie Lane. Rawhide by Frankie Lane. Released in 1961. That See? This is- You're smarter now. You're smarter. Gosh. I don't care if you like it or not. But let's help Jordan out. Can you admit your references are a bit dated? Well, there's a question they're dated, but that's the spice that I bring to the show. You and Rachel don't know about anything since like 2000. So we don't know what Deloney knows. What's going on inside his head is just, it's just dangerous. You don't want to. So write. I got to bring a little bit of culture, a Thank little you. bit of uh, knowledge. I bring some vocab, you bring some culture, and we meet in the middle. Listen, I love it. Nobody's complaining about the Rawhide reference. Plus, I think people want to hear me sing more. Oh, gosh. I could be wrong about that one. Nope. We want to hear from Jordan in Missoula. Love that place. Jordan, what's going on? <laughs> Hi. Thank you so much for taking my call. I appreciate it. Sure. What's going on? 
I mean, first of all, I enjoy the banter between you you both. It's pretty comical. See, to James, to. people like See, it. See, James? James is always <laughs> honest about the banter, and Jordan likes it. So there you go. Well, Jordan, we uh, like yeah, you. Th- well, thank you so much. Uh, so my question is, um, I've been following, you know, the baby step stuff for quite a while, and I'm, I'm considering upgrading my truck. My question is, um, should I just cool my jets and be patient and content with what I have? Or, you know, based on where I'm at financially, is it reasonable for me to consider an upgrade? Um, just a quick background. Um, no, no debt other than my mortgage. Um, uh, my house is worth roughly 450 K and we owe 180 on it, uh, 15 year fixed rate mortgage. Um, I make 120 K a year gross. Um, and my wife's a stay at home mom. Our other vehicle is, is a paid for Honda pilot that's worth roughly 30. And I would consider spending 30 on this new truck. Um, my current truck is 20 years old. I can maybe get 10 grand for it. It's starting to show a little bit of signs of breaking down. Um, so considering just keeping that thing until it just completely dies or maybe splurging and, and getting something a little nicer. So we're talking 20 K we'll get you the, this truck. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm doing it today. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, that was easy. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, you did a, first of all, you did a really good job of laying out the facts. Every Ramsey show caller should study your model. That was fantastic. You laid it out perfectly. <laughs> yeah. You've got the money. You got the value. You've lived like no one else. And yeah. so now you are you went from intense to intentional in baby steps four, five, six. You've got this mortgage you're chipping away at diligently. But it's okay at that point to go on the vacations and splurge and upgrade the car. You're doing it with cash. And you're right there in our parameter where you're, the total of all things with motors and wheels adds up to half of your annual income. So between the pilot and this truck you're getting, you're right there at about half of that 120 at 60. And so you're doing it the right way, Jordan. What, what are you kind of truck get, is or- it? What is it? What, so I probably would get a, a Toyota Tundra. I'm not yes. totally sure. Still in the, the the researching phase. I like to nerd it's out a good and look one. up a bunch of stuff. I just like rode that. in Winston Cruz's Toyota Tundra. Oh, you did. Let me tell you, Ken. Name dropping. I think I'm a tuck. I'm a truck guy now. <laughs> so way to go, Jordan. Okay, Love that for you. you. You're doing Appreciate it the right it. way, man. Living like no one else, and now driving like no one else. Yeah. Paying cash, selling the other truck. It's going to be a 20k gap. He's got the money. This is what we like to see, America. Smart decisions. Very exciting. Nice new truck. Arr, 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 arr. And we're off the air. The- hey, folks. You know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre approval and a secured interest rate. Plus, a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Ken Coleman. The number to call is 888-825-5225. Up next, we've got Bill in New Haven, Connecticut. Bill, how's it going? Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, my wife and I are in a very difficult situation. I'm 71. I'll be 72 next month. My wife is 66. She teaches at a private school. We moved from uh, a state where the salaries are considerably lower than they are here in Connecticut, and the cost of living is not a whole lot different. And um, this past summer, in the heat of the summer, for Connecticut, our air conditioning went out completely. And it's going to cost us almost 14500 to get a new uh, furnace and everything uh, to replace the one that went that went out, and uh, that's going to 
you know, we they have a state program here. I can finance. It'll be almost uh, one it'll be about a one seventy five a month for ten years. Additionally, my wife took out a parent loan for our daughter to go to college. I was adamantly opposed to it, but you know, her philosophy is she's my baby and I love her, so I'm going to do it. And due to being in forbearance twice, once due to being to getting sick and having to take off work during the school year in the other state, and um, and then moving uh, up here to Connecticut, uh, she went into forbearance each of those two times. And what that means is that you don't have to make a payment, but the interest accrues. Mm-hmm. As a result, she still owes over a hundred thousand oh. dollars on that. Our, yes, our daughter went to a private school in New York, and uh, yes, uh, it's like I've been fighting a losing battle financially all these years. And hey, I'm seventy-one now. I'll be seventy-two next month, and I have to go back to work. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, I took an early retirement a few years ago, but, you know, all I'm getting is a small Social Security check because my salaries were always low. I have a a small Army Reserve retirement. Thank goodness I stayed in that for over 20 years. And then I have a very, very small state retirement from our most recent state. I worked for the state retirement system uh for a few years so and, what is um, what is the household income add up six, to right now our total income our agi is less than a hundred thousand okay putting everything and my wife is 66 and she would like to start receiving social security when she can get the maximum dollar amount and i would like her to do that too but she's talking about starting to receive Social Security as soon as she can, which I believe is about another six or months or so, something like that. And uh, it would be considerably less. And she teaches at a private school now. She's happy there. The salaries at private schools are very low. But she says at her age, if she were to get a Connecticut teaching certificate, nobody would hire her. Because who wants a who wants a sixty uh, six year old woman? I don't woman? buy that one. Well, that's what she says. And uh, plus, she she loves where she is now. She was in a miserable teaching situation uh, in the previous state. That's why she went on sick leave because the superintendent drove her to that. To make a long story short. And then we moved up here, and so due to those two situations is why she went on the forbearance because we did not have any money coming in to make the payments. Now, I'm looking at, at going back to work, whether it's full-time or part-time, preferably full-time because, like I said, I need the money. Well, and how much do you guys have places, that's liquid? Liquid pardon? cash. Oh, nothing. We have bills up to our eyeballs. You have more debt than the Parent PLUS loans and this 14.5 HVAC? Yes. What else? Yes. Credit cards, of course. And it's about $70,000. Goodness gracious. Yes, I know. I know. It's it's horrifying. And I'm Is your wife concerned I... about this or is it just oh, you? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Both of us are concerned. And what other debt? Well, the house What's left on the mortgage? Oh, gee. Probably about well, 200 and something thousand. Okay. What's the house worth? Uh, I don't know. We're not sure about that. It's about... What'd you buy it for? I'm trying to remember. We bought it for 3,000 and something, uh, 300,000 and something. Okay. Uh now, I'm like I said, I'm looking at going back to work, and I know that some of the places I've come across mention in their ads that they offer 401ks. Some mention that they offer 401ks with a match. 
some do not mention a 401k at all. Now, my understanding is that you have to begin withdrawing from a 401k at a certain age. And I'm wondering if at my age, would I even be allowed to put money into a 401k? And uh, if I did, what would I do? Put the, put the money in the 401k and get the employer's match and then start withdrawing the 401k? Well, truthfully, Bill, bills. I don't want to be their bearer of bad news, but we got a ways to go before we would even begin investing. So we wouldn't recommend oh. you do any investing until you clean up this mess. Even with the uh, even with the employer match. Even with the employer match, you guys are so underwater on payments. You don't have a dime to invest. You're exactly right. So we need to clean up this debt. And so I'm going to start with the smallest balance to largest. I'm going to try to. Can your daughter make the payment on these student loans? She won't do it. Why? She says it's the parent's responsibility to pay for the child's education. I Goodness paid for all of my education. Who taught yes, her that? Mom? Uh, how did you guess? Oh, my goodness. Well, okay, so, Bill, here's the reality. You've you, been catered to her whole life. Well, yeah. this is as much a marital problem as much jobs. as financial. You, yeah, you You've got, got some resentment towards, towards your spouse. Yeah, you've you got a marriage issue. And George and I can't solve the marriage issue. Unfortunately, the marriage issue has created a mountain of money issues. And um, Bill, look, here's the bottom line. We teach the baby steps for a reason, whether you're 71, 51, or 31. And right now, what you have to do is $1,000 is an emergency fund. And unfortunately, you had a massive emergency in the form of an HVAC system. you got to take care of that, George. That's, uh, that's a tough situation. Uh, you can't you can't use credit cards to do that. Um, but you guys are going to have to scramble and work. And uh, it's time for you and mom to have a conversation with the daughter. And it's time for her to grow up. That's going to be a difficult conversation. If your wife is as concerned as you said she is, then it's time for her to have some hard conversations. But this is a mess. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at 200000 outside of the mortgage that you guys owe if you're taking on these Parent PLUS loans while making ninety. And you're already set almost 72, Bill. And so we've got to make some big decisions. you got to go make 25 bucks an hour at least, 40 hours a week to help. But you need your wife on the same page first. You're not going to make any progress when you're trying to do this on your own. And you need to have that hard conversation with your daughter and say, listen, mom and dad are broke. And if, unless you want to be taking care of us for the next 20 years, we need to clean up our mess and you need to clean up these student loans. But again, the legal responsibility is on you guys, which is the worst part about these Parent PLUS loans, Ken. High interest rates, forbearance, the kid doesn't pay, it's on the parents, and uh, Thanksgiving dinner's real awkward. Bill, I'm so sorry you're going through this, man. I hope that you can clean this up and one day retire again, but this time the right way, with some dignity, with some peace, with some patience, and with a pile of money. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Ken Coleman. This is The Ramsey Show. The number to call is 888-825-5225. You call in, we'll talk about your money, your work, and your life. We'll help you take the right next step. Daniel is in Raleigh. Welcome to the show, Daniel. How are you doing? Hey, thanks guys so much for having me. I'm, I'm a big fan. We appreciate that. What's your question today? Of course. So I'm 18, I'm a freshman at UNC, and I'm studying business and entrepreneurship. Cool. Um, I own my own business, and I've been having difficulties being able to do a good job both running my business and also doing a good job in school. What's your business? We are an event entertainment company. We specialize in balloon animals and face paint. Cool. 
Are we talking like kids' birthday parties, carnivals? Like, what are your <clears throat> main gigs? We do some kids' birthday parties. We do lots of festivals, restaurant work. Um, we work with some of the sports teams in North Carolina, like the Panthers and the Hornets. Cool. Um, yeah. All right. And how successful has this business been, and how much time are you putting into it? It's It's been pretty successful. I started it when I was 12, and for five years I was practicing and getting to be the best balloon twister I could. Um, and I've hired up a team to help me run this while I'm in college. Um, last year in 2022, we only made $2,200, but this past year we were able to make over 25,000. Great. And that's net profit. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. And you're saying, Hey, this is a lot for me to run while I'm in college. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. And how, how many classes are you taking? Like how many hours are you devoting to school and how much free time do you have right now? I'm devoting about probably 30 to 40 hours to school um, and another 30 hours to my business. Um, and it's just kind of a lot while I'm also trying to be social and have a good time in college. So, um, so the question I have is, is this a long-term business play for you or is this something you kind of started? It's throwing off the cash and you kind of enjoy it. I mean, what's the strategy here with this business mm -hmm. as it is today? Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm enamored with what I do. I, I love making balloons for a living. It's, it's a lot of fun. I want to do it for life. Um, this is a business I want to own and grow to hopefully be a national change someday. Um, and we've been growing really well this year and last year, and this is what I want to do with my life. Um, and I'm going to school for a chance to learn how to better grow my business while also getting to have fun while getting an education. Well, so you've got, you mentioned three things. You've got school, mm -hmm. you've got the business, and you've got a social life. It doesn't sound mm -hmm. like you can do all three of those to the level that you want. So you've got to start going, mm -hmm. okay, let me reverse engineer this. What's most important long term? And that's going to determine what's most important in the short term. And I, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be coy with the answer, but it's like, okay, maybe I don't take as many classes. I can mm -hmm. still pursue the degree. I'm not in any way telling you to drop out of college, but I'm saying mm -hmm. something's got to give. Or you because, do less gigs with the business. Yeah, that's the other or thing. Or you're less involved. That's right. The business stays where it is for now, meaning it doesn't grow until mm -hmm. you have more time to give to it. Something mm -hmm. has to give way here. That's true. Can yeah. you delegate more to the team? I can. Um, I've hired up a manager that will start. I'm training him in sales right now, and that's a big thing I've been dealing with is sales for the business and taking the sales calls. And hopefully, I'll have more time to focus on other things, whether that's higher leverage opportunities for our business or more time towards school. I'm, I'm not sure yet. What is the thing um, that you're most valuable in in the business right now? You just mentioned one aspect. You've been doing sales. Mm -hmm. well, what's the thing that only you can do right now? Right now it's sales, um, but hopefully soon it won't be. Um, I'd say... I have a lot of the strategy for the business. I'm the one that makes the instructional videos on how to learn balloon twisting since we train our own balloon twisters. Um, so just, I guess, HR and growing the team as well as finding the customers and making the right decisions to get customer leads. Okay. And who's paying for school right now? Right now my parents are. Um, they're paying for the first year or two, um, and I will be able, I, I won't have issues paying for school afterwards either. So you have no debt and you have a pile of money in the bank and you're also putting money away that you're making from the business? Yes, sir. I save almost all of my income. Incredible. Cause that's an important piece of this equation is mm -hmm. not going into debt. I want to see you finish mm -hmm. school. If that's a goal for you to get this degree that will help you mm -hmm. flourish in business and it sounds like you want to do this long-term, full-time, as soon as you're out of school. Yeah. So this is a mm -hmm. temporary – you got, what, three more years, or are you in the first year? I'm, I'm in my first year. I'm, okay. I'm a freshman, yes. Yeah. So the other question is, how do we expedite college? Can you take on more credits and just crush through this so you're 21 mm -hmm. years old graduating to pursue mm -hmm. this business? That's, that's that true. might mean you slow down in order to speed up. Mm -hmm. And so that might mean delegating. It might mean the business just – doesn't go for a season 
And mm-hmm. that you got to be okay with that because you're doing a lot at once right now. And I don't want to see your grade suffer while the business suffers and you end up not making progress on either. That's, that's true. That's, that's a good point. I, I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so I'd sit down with the, with the folks that you have, see what kind of hires you need to make while making this business sustainable because you don't want to mm-hmm. eat into all the profits trying to just keep this business afloat to where it's not really accomplishing anything for you. Yes, sir. So that's um, that's some big decisions to make at your age. I'm proud of you, man. You've done really well. Thank you. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Best of luck um, with the future. Anything else we can help with? Yeah. Um, so I've been following you guys' baby steps, and I'm now on baby step five. And, I mean, I'm 18 years old. I don't have a wife or kids, and I don't even have a girlfriend. So it feels a little premature to start saving for my child's college fund. Uh, what would you recommend doing once I make it to baby step five and I'm not sure how to move forward? I would focus on a home down payment fund. And that might just mm-hmm. be a general high yield savings account. And you put every mm-hmm. extra dollar you can into that high yield savings account and it's sitting there mm-hmm. making you four to 5%. Uh, the mm-hmm. other thing you could do is open up a Roth IRA and contribute to that. Okay. And Max went out for the year based on your stage mm-hmm. and based on the fact that you told me you're going to graduate debt-free. So I think both of those mm-hmm. are wise for your future goals. Because when you graduate, adulthood is going to hit you like a ton of bricks with bills, and you're going to want to do stuff mm-hmm. and buy a home one day. And so to be ahead of the game with no debt and a pile of money in the bank, dude, you're going to be light years ahead of your peers. That, that's the plan. Thank you. Um, right now, I have about half of my money saved in a high-yield savings account Good. and half of my money saved in... The stock market, specifically with VU and RSP. Um, how do I know how to all- allocate money to reinvest in my business versus allocate money for the stock market? How do I know where I should be investing more of my money? Well, I would look at you know what the last year of business expenses has looked for you. What's coming up in the next year for you know hiring, and we got to upgrade our equipment. And so that's the amount of money I'd be starting kind of a sinking fund and reserves for. But outside of that, you've got the money set aside in your savings account. And so if worse came to worse, you could kind of rob Peter to pay Paul in a sense to cover any business expense. But if you're running this thing debt-free and you've got some money to cover those equipment, expenses, rentals, whatever your needs are, you're in great shape as far as the business. And so unless it's making a new hire, which hopefully they're going to produce enough revenue to offset what they cost you. So that's going to be the goal running this business. I'm going to send you a copy of Dave's book, Entree Leadership, as well. Daniel, that's our playbook for how Dave built this thing from a card table in his living room to the Ramsey Empire with over a 1,000 team members in this amazing campus. And I think it will encourage you along the way as you're actually hiring people at 18 years old. I mean, what an impressive kid. This is this is an adult, and his parents did a great job raising him well. He's asking the right old. questions. Yeah, I mean, certainly at 18, looking long term like this, and having to make these kind of tough decisions, very entrepreneurial. You love seeing that in this generation, and um, really interesting to see. And you know, I, I never want to push anybody to drop out of college, but at some point, how much, what business training do you need versus a true four year degree? Maybe even Learning looking at trenches. more business classes, business training small business things like that. I That's love what it. I'd be looking at. And Daniel, if you ever come by Ramsey Solutions, I'd love to you to twist me a, a little camel balloon. I think that'd be fun. Oh, what do you think, Ken? I, yeah, I would actually love to see that. That puts this hour of the Ramsey <laughs> Show in the books. Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm George Campbell, joined by Ken Coleman, and we are your hosts this hour. The number to call is 888-825-5225. If you've got a question about money, work, purpose, your career, the job you feel stuck in, we are here to help you take the next step. 888-825-5225. Adam kicks us off in Miami. Adam. What is going on in Miami? Hey, thank you for having me. Sure. How can we help? 
Yeah, so um, I I actually found out today, so this is kind of the reason for my call. I found out today that I uh, owe $31,000 in uh, student debt, and I know that sounds a little crazy, but the reason is is because um, – so um, I had, I guess, two – I called two loans, I guess. Um, one was a parent plus, and that was taken care of by, uh, that was forgiven because of a GI bill. And my family is a little bit dysfunctional. Um, and kind of every time I brought it up, I would see in my credit report this $31,000. And it's, it was actually 27 before the interest. Um, and it was just told that, you know, um, it was taken care of. Don't worry about it. It's wrong. It'll be updated. It was discharged. And so I just kind of did a research today and found out that it's totally separate and it's in my name. So, you know, I, I have to take care of it. So basically it's, uh, you know, uh, student loans spread at about 31,000 spread across nine uh, loans, you know, throughout the four years. Um, so I, I was just considering consolidating it. I, I just wanted to, you know, kind of have, a, I don't really know where to start. So I was just hoping to get some advice on how to attack it. Mm. Well, it's a rude awakening for sure, and I'm sure very frustrating, and not causing a, not causing any repair with the relationship with your family, that told you, hey, don't worry about it, we've got yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Man. I was I was saving up for a car, so. So know, where are you at now? Do you have any other debt? No. Okay. And how much money do you have in the bank? Um, in investments in a Roth IRA, about ten, and then in. Uh, Stocks about ten and about two or three, um, just um, it's sitting in, it's sitting in the bank account. Okay, great. So, what's your income? Um, so my base is about seventy five. I started a new job recently. Should be could 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 potentially be. Uh, it's hard to speculate, but uh, it could potentially be well over a hundred. Wonderful. Okay, so the good news is in this mess is that you're going to be done with this debt. My guess is within six months. I mean, yeah, I'd love to hear it. So should I consolidate it? Is that something you know across like across those? It's it's nine summer nine loans ranging from two to seven thousand. Yeah, I was in a very similar position to you when I was 23. I did pull my credit report, realized I had thirty six thousand in student loans across about eleven loans. And the way I did mm -hmm. it is the way I'm going to recommend to you, and that is to not mm -hmm. consolidate these debts because all you're doing is just moving the debt around into one big pile instead of tiny piles. So you didn't really yeah. do anything. You just have the illusion that you did something. Mm -hmm. So instead, what I would do is just attack the smallest one with a vengeance, and I would also – and this is also something I did – I would sell those, those stocks that you have. Yeah. That's not retirement, right? You just invested in a bunch of stocks, and it's at 10K. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's an Acorns account that yep. I used. Okay. So I would liquidate that, and I would move away from single stocks anyways. And mm -hmm. instead, once you're debt-free with an emergency fund, then I would begin to invest 15% into tax-advantaged retirement accounts. And I would quit. I wouldn't use the Acorns app if I'm in your shoes. Yeah. And I think that's going to give you a better long-term future, and it's going to get you out of debt the fastest. Because you told me you've got you know two thousand plus the ten thousand in stocks. The rest is retirement accounts mm -hmm. in the investments. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. Okay, so you've almost knocked out. You know, you've knocked out a third and almost a half of your student loans just by doing this. Mm -hmm. So that leaves you, that leaves you with nineteen thousand left. You're going to make a hundred. So the question is, how quickly can we pay off nineteen, making a hundred? How much margin can we throw at these debts from smallest to largest balance, ignoring the interest rate? Yeah, um, that's definitely something I'll have to figure out. But you know, I definitely don't want to, you know, not have anything in the bank. Um, well, you'll have a thousand dollars. You'll leave as a starter emergency fund, and then for six months, yeah. what you're going to do is try to throw three thousand dollars a month toward your smallest debts and make minimum payments on the rest. Okay. So 3,000 times six, 18, which is about what you'll have after you sell the stocks, put a little bit of the money you have in savings and put that all towards your debts. That's going to knock out almost half your student loans. You tracking? Yeah. So you're yeah, going to free I, up I payments. I for sure. That payment gets rolled into the next debt along with all the margin you're mustering up from your income. And I'm telling you, man, you could be in a very different place six months from now. And six months after that, you're going to save up a fully funded emergency fund. Three to six months yeah. of expenses. You wouldn't, you wouldn't suggest at all like going with you know monthly payments or anything like that? 
Monthly payments on what? Like, well, I guess, I guess, never mind. You know, while well, I was just thinking consolidating and turning into monthly payments, but that's not the right call. So, well, it doesn't move yeah. you forward. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to help you move forward yeah. and get rid of this debt instead of just move it and go, well, I've made it into one big payment because yeah. I can't keep up with nine. Instead, I found that it was much more motivating for me to see each net debt get knocked out one by one, freeing up a payment, applying it to the next one and the next one. And with doing this plan, I'm telling you, 12 months from now, you're debt-free with a fully funded emergency fund, and you're investing 15% of your income in retirement. Okay. If you do it your yeah, way, you're going to be calling back a year from now. Yeah. I, I, Interest I wanna, growing. I, I, I got to gotta jump in here. Adam, I know you understand what George said, but after he explained it really clearly, and you said you understood it, you jumped right back into the consolidation thing. It leads me to believe that you've got some people that are pretty influential in your life that are pitching you on this. And you're and while you understand what George is saying, I'm not sure you believe it yet. Am I right or am I wrong? No, uh, you're wrong. I, I honestly don't really have anyone to go to for financial advice. Okay, um, good. So, so it, listen, yeah, do so, you believe uh, yeah. then – So, so I'm glad. I'm glad I'm wrong. But do you believe that you can do what George is saying? Yeah, I, I do. I, I believe it's going to be very tough, but that's, that's very possible. All right, dude. I did not make a hundred k. Yeah, I was making a starter salary, and I had more debt than you. And I did this yeah. in eighteen months yeah. with some hustle. I was doing side hustles, so you got to be willing to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And you can do this in six yeah. months, in a third of the time, with this amazing income and with these stocks you're going to sell. That's right. And so you got to quit getting distracted. That's what's happening here. You're doing a lot of things at once. And you have an amazing income, yeah. and your greatest wealth building tool is your income. And right now, it's being siphoned away from student loans and your stress and distracting, distracted by Acorn's micro investing apps. And I talk about these mm -hmm. investing traps in the book, and I specifically call out ones like Acorns because I think they're, these apps are designed to take your money, not make you money. I, I would like to give the first book of yours that I've given away. Right what an now. honor! Breaking free from broke. It's your <laughs> gift, Adam. I'm giving it to you, but George did all the work. See how I did that? I like that. Hang on the line. Austin will get you a copy of that because, George, you really do do a great job of explaining the game that people are in. It's kind of like you're, you're, you're breaking down the matrix in this book. Yes. The financial matrix. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. Yeah. And I hope it helps Adam break free from broke because he's a wise young man making good money. And I want to see that money help him build wealth instead of big towers in the sky for Sally Mae. So hang on the line, Adam. We'll send you a copy of Breaking Free from Broke and wishing you the best with that payoff. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Ken Coleman. The number to call is 888-825-5225. Well, let's get to the lines. Lisa joins us up next in my hometown, Boston, Massachusetts. Lisa, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this opportunity to discuss and get your insights on this. So Absolutely. I I'm single. I was recently laid off. I'm collecting severance for about the next 15 months. I currently rent. As you know, my rent continues to go nowhere but up. And I'm at a, a pivotal time in my life where I'm actually thinking about relocating to an area where I can afford to purchase a home for around a price that will keep my mortgage even lower than my rent. And I was looking for some insight and advice on that. Okay. So what, what job did you get laid off from? What were you doing? I was in uh, media for a long time. I was fortunate, you know, they owe me nothing. I was there 25 great years, but it's a little bit scary now because I'm a little older in age and I'm not really sure if I even want to do the big corporate job anymore. I, I really would rather do something more purpose and volunteerism, and I really can't see me having that luxury if I continue to chase rent. So I was thinking about relocating, you know, purchasing a home. I can't, as you know, right, can't get a house from anywhere near Boston for 325000 but I can if I relocate. And I was actually toying with, although this is where I'm looking for your insight, 
over like about four years, just purchasing my home outright. So in like four years time, I have no debt. And at that point I could afford to live on, you know, my pension and my social security and my remaining 401k that I don't touch for my home. Okay. So where are you thinking about moving to? Florida. Oh, there you go. all right. There you yeah, go. Yeah, Big change. Yeah. But I love the sun. I'm not a cold person, not a skier. I've always stayed here for my family, but I'm at a point now where, uh, you know, it's not a good enough reason to keep me grounded. I can continue to come home and visit family. They'll come to me. So I just think, you know, this maybe is serving as a catalyst for me to do something, you know, put my big girl pants on, which I never would have done before, and, you know, take that chance and move and purchase a home. I like about a lot of what I'm hearing. I am just curious why you wouldn't continue to work. Uh, you've got a lot of well, experience. I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying I won't. I think it's I don't want the pressure of having to go out and get what I had, right? Um, That's you know, fine. I'm trying to be a realist. What you know? did you have? So, Tell me a little bit more. Like, what were you doing yeah. and what were you making? I was making about $140,000 a year. Doing I was what? in media. But what? what? You... Uh, uh, sales. Sales. Okay. Yeah. okay. And so when you so say been, yeah. you don't want to go out and feel the pressure to get a sales job, making 140, is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I also have some health things I might be facing um, that I might have to take a little bit of time for myself. Okay, I, gotcha. I was recently diagnosed with, you know, an issue that has to be addressed, nothing life changing, but might need to take a little bit of t- downtime yeah. for myself. Sure. So, you know, because of those factors, I'm just trying to think, well, what can I do to get myself where I feel in a better situation that I don't have to make this money? And, you know, I, I have, you know, I guess it's all relative in life. I think I have a pretty good um, you know, retirement strategy and savings in my 401k and liquid savings. I don't have a lot of debt, but I also don't, you know, I've been so disciplined and worked so hard. I don't want it because I'm now suddenly faced with like a health thing and losing my job that I panic and make a really bad choice. So that's why I was calling into, you know, to you gentlemen, because, yeah. you know, I'm a big fan of the you show. You mentioned you have debt. Just, I have one debt. I have a car payment, which I can easily pay off. I, I just haven't because I was working. At okay. 4% What's left on the I loan? Like, eh. uh, 17000 Okay. And how much money do you have in savings? I have about 800000 in a 401k, 100000 in liquid savings, and then I have like a lump sum, for better words, lack of better words, that I can take out as a pension or I can roll over to a 401k that's a lump sum amount as well. Okay, great. Well, Lisa, I'm going to answer this as if I was in your shoes. How old are you? 58. Okay. If I'm in your shoes and you, I really wanted to move to Florida, I would, number one, take some of this liquid savings and pay off the set, the card loan today. Okay. Now Thanks. you're debt-free. You. It's mm-hmm. going to free up a payment. And then, here's the crazy part, I would go rent in Florida for a little while until I figured out what was next. And I would be, okay. I would personally be looking for a job so that I'm able to pay off this house. Once I had the house paid off and I had enough in retirement, then I would go, all right, Lisa's out and she's going to maybe have an early retirement or an mm-hmm. encore career. But I wouldn't just, you know, pack it up and go to the, uh, you know, the 50s <laughs> living community in Florida. And, yeah, and- Margaritaville. <laughs> I keep thinking of the Seinfeld. That's actually no, but no, that's actually I, like a neighborhood in Florida. Oh, that yeah. they're all over the country. They actually it look is, amazing. It is. Well, for that, up, I've been yeah. going to this area for a while, guys, and I do love the area, and I have friends there, so it's Great. not a knee jerk reaction from love that it. perspective. But can you it's rent? More of a, excuse me. Can you rent over I, there I for can. a little while? The rent will be high. The rent will be high, and I just. The market's kind of going up. My friends bought two years ago and their house doubled. I'm almost a little pressured where I feel like I know I can still go buy a nice house for 325 So you would buy a house for 325 and your down payment mm-hmm. would be the rest of your liquid cash outside of an emergency fund? Mm, I'm thinking of not doing that. I'm thinking about just putting 10% down and then over four years withdraw the money from my 401k and pay it off outright. But you're going to be unemployed. And we need to pay a mortgage now. That's three hundred thousand dollars. But I have, I have, um, I, I've already been pre-approved because of my severances and my four hundred one k. They do a continuance program where I can guarantee that I can pay it 
But what happens when the severance is over? The severance is 16 months, and I'm sure I'll have a job by then. It's no different than if I'm here renting and strapped down. I, I guess where I'm going with this, guys, is I know if I own a home and I get a job making half my money, I can say, hey, you know what? I'm going to pay $75,000 a year and just get rid of this in its entirety. Now all I have is my food and utility bills. I can never say that. I, listen, I, rent. I'm I, just- I, we get where you're going. I don't think we like how you're trying to get there. In fact, I know we don't like how you're trying to get there, but love, <laughs> love where you want to go. I mean, if you've got friends down there and you could room roommate up, you know, for six months and do a short term lease, get on the ground. I know you visited a bunch. Um, or put put the rest of the what are you going to have left after the uh, car payment? Seventeen, you're going to have a what about eighty three thousand to put yeah, down? Yeah, eighty three thousand. Well, you know, look, that's twenty percent down. You know, yeah, on a sixty five is is, yeah. is that much? So you can leave the rest as an emergency fund. I would put as much down as possible. Mm-hmm. I would to put it all down, but you eas- you easily have the twenty percent that we like to recommend. Yeah, it'll and, help you avoid PMI okay. and, and get a job. And I'm willing to do that. Good. Yeah, and take I'm willing a couple to do months. the twenty percent. Okay. Here's right. what I would do. I'm okay. going to add to what George said. I would take a couple months. Okay. Chill out, right? Take care of your health right. issue. You're going to be okay. I'd take two months max. Get down there, get the girlfriends, you know, have some fun times, you know, throw the margs back a couple nights, but we're we're now looking for a job down there. We're going to have a good time. We're going to get employed. We're not going to use that severance to live off of. I would be stacking that severance. If, if it were me, I'd be trying to only use a couple months of that severance, George, get employed down there, and take the rest of that severance and plug it into the baby steps. Yeah, well, Lisa, you told us you don't want to be pressured into getting back into the sales job. Well, you're going to feel pressure when the severance is running out and you haven't found that dream yet so i'm going to start searching asap and land that to give you some some cushion and i want you to take as small of a mortgage as possible because the goal is to pay it off as quickly as possible and it's going to reduce your mortgage payment down the more you put down the smaller the payment that's right less pressure you have to go out and make 140 grand and i don't think it'll be a pressure situation with your personality your sales experience you could crush it down there lisa sold us on this dream i know she's got the sales skills george and i are going to come down and uh visit it's going to be great oh kenny boy and me in margaritaville Uh, margaritaville it's going to be great we'll hang out with the 50 something What's Play that pickleball? drink you like, the Gumby Slumber? The Gumby Slumber. That's a Ken Coleman favorite right fantastic. there. fantastic. Look it up. She'll have one ready for you. Lisa, we're wishing you the best with this next chapter of your life and, of course, wishing you the best with these health issues. Hope you can get them taken care of, and we'll see you in Florida. This is The Ramsey Show. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Ken Coleman. The number to call is 888-825-5225. Hayden's up next in Dallas, Texas. Hayden, welcome to The Ramsey Show. How you doing? Great. How are you? I'm doing good. So my question is, I'm 18 years old. I'm still a senior in high school, and mm, I've figured out relatively before my senior year started that I want to be a large animal vet, and... I know that it's going to be very pricey and I don't have any money saved up for um, college besides what I'm going to get for showing uh, showing my barrels, barrows, which would be about like maybe $8,000. And I have no idea how to go about scholarships or anything like that. What's the price range? Uh, I'm assuming there are more than a handful. How many schools would train you in that, and then what's the range of price on that? Are they all pretty similar? So the route that I was going to go is I'm just going to go to my local college um, in my county and get my basics and go over to Commerce, which is around, I think when I calculated, it was 20000 a year, I think it was. 
Okay, and, so so we need to be super crystal clear on that, and then you need to do a lot of research to go how many large vet schools are in the country and what are my options there? Because 20,000 a year, how long is the program? Let's just say it's 20,000. You need to be really sure on what that number is, first of all. But what? how many years are we talking about? 20,000 times what? So that's, that's just the animal science, and that would be four years. So we're talking 80,000, then what? Uh, it's either two or four years for pre-vet, which I can either go to a and M, OSU, or te- uh, Texas Tech to do... Why are those the only three options? Because uh, those are the only ones near me that I'm comfortable driving to that has a vet um, license program. So... Okay, so let's keep adding this up because it's important to what we're going to to walk through with you. So, so two or four years, how much f- is that? How much is that? For what, what was it? The second one. I don't know what the first one was something about animals and the second one was pre-vet. This pre-vet. How much is that going to cost? Pre-vet, um, if I take it at a and Commerce, it would be, I think, 20000 as well. I can also Total or up. per year? Per year. Okay, so you're talking 40 to 80K on top of that. Goodness gracious. Sakes and so then far. you have actual vet school? Yes, you ha- have to go through a license. School. How many years and how much? We're playing the same game here. Mm-hmm. How many years, how much? Let's, let me look it up real fast because I've not looked up that aspect of it. So if I get accepted... That's the hope. Yeah, that's the that's the hope. It's very hard to get accepted. Um... All right, I'll tell you what. Just for uh, our listeners' sake, it's like an accountant getting the taxes done. And I don't even crunch. care what the number is. It's crazy. Yes, it is. It's thirty or twenty-two thousand a year. Okay, for how many years? Another four years? We're not sure. Two to four. It's. It's. I think it's two for just the vet license. All right. Pre-vet, you can take a two-year or a four-year. All right. So what's your? What are you? What are you wrestling through? How can we help specifically? Because we're not going to tell you to take a loan out for that. That's insane. If you just play the numbers yeah. out and you look at what you would make your first year out, your second year out, what your path to growth is, and you run the numbers on an interest rate and what you're going to be paying back, you're going to find out pretty quickly it's really not worth it. But most young people, because we don't teach you in our culture to actually run the numbers and think about what it's actually going to look like when you get out, you've been told your whole life that this is just, this is the uh, price of entry. And it Mm -hmm. is the price of entry, no question, but it doesn't have to be loaned. Maybe we're going to get in that field and we're going to make a lot of money and we're going to cash flow this. Uh, But you've got to think through this. Scholarships, what can you do? You know, what are my options around the country? I don't care that you can't drive to some place in Arkansas, but if Arkansas has got something and it's a lot cheaper, I can tell you this, no animal owner cares where you went to school, and I promise you the animal doesn't care. But you, as a young man, have got to look at this stuff and go, is this worth it? Is there another way? These are two big questions that you don't have the answers to. So I, so to the worth it part, there is one one thing that kind of makes me think it might be worth it is after you get out and get a vet license, you have to practice for a little bit under a, uh, under a company, of course, but the USDA can give you a contract for three years to go to a county they choose and pay $25,000 a year off of your um, student loan debt, and you can sign that contract of, as how many years you need to. But there's some golden handcuffs there, because what yeah. are you going to be making there? Yeah. It sounds like you're, it's a you're not limited making income. Much. I got news for you, you young know. man. You're not going to make a lot working for a county vet. In fact, you're going to be making the uh, yeah. bottom of the barrel. So they'll pay you 40k and they'll pay off 25 of your student loans. That's a 65k deal. Yeah, no thanks. You could probably go make more than that elsewhere. Yeah, that's a, that's another thing that I've been thinking about is also you make 40k working under somebody. You need to go talk to some vets. You got to figure out what vets are actually making out there yeah. in your area doing what you do 
and then figure out, okay, is this still what I want to pursue? And then how do I do it affordably? And so there's a few steps. I'm going to send you my book, Breaking Free from Broke, because I've got a whole section on student loans and how to go to college debt free. Here's the spark notes. Number one, you got to take debt off the table, Hayden. You got to say, I'm going to do it without debt no matter what. When you pre-decide that, it changes the rest of your decisions. Then we can talk about college savings accounts, choosing an affordable school, which might mean you might need to move across the country for this dream. And you can't limit yourself to these three schools that might cost a pretty penny. Then we get into applying for scholarships and grants as if it's a part-time job. I'm talking 15 to 20 hours a week. You're applying for so many scholarships and grants, your head is spinning. You hear me? And then you're going to also going to work part time while you're in school. And all of this is going to help you cash flow it and help you leave without yeah. debt. And that might mean it takes longer, but right now you're looking at a, a 10 year journey to become a vet. Is that right? Yes, sir. And about $200,000. Yikes. With this current plan. Hey, how, how sure, look, if, if you could do it for free, okay, you wouldn't have any of this debt. And that was one option on the table right now. And then I, I said to you, but I've got some other options that would allow you to use what you do well to do stuff that you like. Would you say, I'm not interested in that? I want to work with animals. I mean, how much of this is passion versus just a genuine kind of, I'm intrigued by it. seems like it might be fun. Because you're 18, sure. awfully young. How well do you know that you want to do this? So pretty, pretty well, because... 16 to 17 years old, I had no idea. Like That's when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I'm in FFA, and I show barrows, and they would have me go down and give shots to pigs, cattle, whatever. And when I was doing it, I was like, this is actually kind of fun, taking care of these animals, um, make sure they're okay. And I've been interning with a vet. Okay, good. Let me ask you this really quick, because our time is short. Is it possible? And if the answer is I don't know, that's okay. But I'd like for you to check into what would a path look like if you were to go work for a veterinarian at a lower level and pay your way through, you know, some lower level degrees that like would would they be interested in paying some of your education or reimbursing you? Is that done at that level? I would think it's a pretty uh you talk about the large animals, I would think there's a lot of demand, yes or no? Demand, yeah. I think there's like a hundred or like a I think there's a hundred ninety five percent increase rate for veterans. For veterinarians? Yeah. Sorry, okay. I don't know why I said veterans. It's okay. Here's what I'm saying. I would like you to see if you could talk to some local veterinarians like George is talking about, um, and get an idea of entry. And what they're making, what their path are they was. interested in finding young people like you who know they want to do it? And would they be willing to supplement your yeah. your your education so you don't have to go out and get a loan for it? I would at least kick the tires on that, George. You got a lot of homework to do. And uh, Hayden, we're going to help you out. I'm going to send you a copy of Breaking Free from Broke. Read chapter four on student loans. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Psalm 1-3. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. Booker T. Washington said, Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. Good stuff. Open phones at 888-825-5225. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Ken Coleman, and we're about to be joined by Walter in Raleigh, North Carolina. What's going on, Walter? Hi, thanks for having me on the show, gentlemen. Sure. Um, I, have a, I have a better question uh, than I have, I have, I've been having in the past. Uh, my wife and I went from a dual-income, no-kids family to a single-income, one-kid family uh, with a with a birth of a three month old. We're on baby step six and we have an outstanding balance on a mortgage of around 220,000. The kicker is that I'm active duty and I can't take on extra jobs. 
my wife is going to school and we're cash flowing that. And in about two to three years, we're going to have to move somewhere. We don't know where. My question is, is it worth still paying down as much of the principal as I can uh, when I know mathematically there's no way that we'll be able to clear the home? Or is there something else that we should be uh, in, like still in stork mode for, for an eventual move? Well, there's no stork on the way, right? We got the one kid? Correct. Okay. And then when is your wife finishing school? Uh, in about two years. Okay. What will she be doing after that with the degree? Uh, environmental science. Cool. All right. So back to your question about the mortgage. There's a fallacy that paying down the mortgage is like wasting money in a sense if you're not going to pay it off in full. And I don't see it that way because what you're doing is really creating a forced savings plan. So all of the money you're paying into that is built into the equity. And when you move and sell that property, you're going to roll over that equity into the new home that you buy. Does that make sense? It does. I'm just I'm, I'm wondering how much extra should I uh, like? I mean, I, I guess I can go with what, what I'm comfortable with. But if we if we just keep making the minimum payments on the mortgage and just I, I, I don't know, just kind of like keeps keep beefing up the six month emergency fund. Um, could we then just pay the principal later or is it better to pay it to pay it incrementally? It's better uh, to pay it as soon as possible because your interest is calculated every single month. And so the sooner you make that extra payment, the sooner the interest starts to get knocked down, more is being thrown at the principal with each payment, and that allows you to make real momentum and progress versus putting it aside and waiting to do it at the end of the year doesn't make sense. And you're not at risk of losing a job, it sounds like. No. So we don't need more than a six-month emergency fund. You're going to be employed. You're not scared of work. And thank you for your service, by the way. And so I feel good about you continuing to pay down this mortgage and just rolling the equity over. And when you're ready to buy a new house, the money's ready to provide for you right there. Okay. But that's what I did personally, Walter. Uh, even if you're going to move, I still tell people pay down the mortgage. It's a forced savings plan. You guys don't have any debt. You have an emergency fund, and you're investing 15%, correct? Correct. Then the next move there, outside of putting some money away for that, um, your child in a 529 plan or an ESA, or do they have some kind of GI bill? They do. Wonderful. This is an awesome uh, plan then. And so next up is getting rid of this mortgage. What's your household income? 85. Okay. So my goal would be how much can we, because you're cash flowing your wife's school as well, or is that covered? Correct. We're, we're, we're cash flowing the, uh, her schooling. Okay. So anything beyond cash flowing, I would be throwing at the mortgage, Walter. And uh, you're going to be thankful when you sell that house and you get so much equity out of it to roll into your next goal. So good luck with the move. And again, thanks for your service. Jenny's up next in Colorado Springs, Colorado. What is going on? Hey, Ken and George. Thank you so much for taking my call. I'm sure. super excited to talk to you. What's um, happening? To get to the meat of the question, I have, I've been in private practice uh, for a couple years doing counseling, and income is kind of, um, it's not consistent, I would say. My husband's in sales, so his income is not consistent either. I accepted a job about a month ago to work for a university doing counseling, um, but this job has kind of a clause where you can't do any outside work. Um, and the yearly salary is 72000 So the main thing that I'm worried about is us paying off our debt with me going to a job where the income is kind of capped, and I can't work outside of that income. When you say work outside, um, is it in counseling, or you couldn't even drive for Uber? Well, so right now I do Instacart and DoorDash, um, and you have to get any sort of permission for outside work other than counseling. So I could potentially, if I got um, permission from like the dean and the regents, it's this whole process that you have to go through to get the permission. But I definitely couldn't do counseling on the side. That's fine. Um, I get that. Have you already taken the job and started or you just recently accepted? Yeah. So, Ken, I'm glad that I'm talking to you and George, of course, but 
I accepted the job, but it took about two and a half months to get credentialed for it. So the start date is in a couple weeks. So you effectively Um, can get out of it. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes, with, you know, with a major feeling of guilt and... No. Uh, well, uh, l- let me just say this. Disappointing them. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know what? Credentialed me. Well, again, you got to do what's best for you. And so if this is not the right decision, I'm not saying that it's not. But if it's not the yeah. right decision, you don't compound a mistake by making another one. You know? Right. Uh, so, so what were you making before you took this job? Um, so in private practice, I can make anywhere between maybe 60 and 90,000 a year just depending on my client load, case load, Got all it. my expenses So are what same, drove really. you so what drove you to take the university job? More stability on the number? Yes, cuz both of our jobs are inconsistent and this the university job has benefits, it's more consistent. Okay, all right, I let me we'll have money to plan on. All right, so I'm going to keep hit rapid fire here cuz we got about 2 minutes and I want to be able to help you. Uh Yeah. How much money, let's say that the university automatically rubber stamped your side hustles, how much money would you want to make where you go, okay, man, that's awesome, Ken. They said I could do this and we need to make this much. What's that number beyond the 72 that you'd want to make on the side? Um, I think realistically I could probably only do like 1000 a month for the side hustles. But would you be because excited to like- have that additional 12000 or would, would, that, would that even make a dent? Um. It wouldn't quite make a dent. We are what, about. What's the goal of making more? You see where yeah. I'm going here? So we're we're scratching our head yeah. and about making twelve thousand that wouldn't make a dent. And to George's point, what's what do we need the additional income for out of your side hustles? What do we need it for? Um, you mean on top of the income that I have? Already? Yes, and top of your seventy-two. Why make- are go ahead? Just to make more of a dent on our debt because we're about seven hundred fifty thousand in debt. Well, how much of that is mortgage? mortgage? Uh, four ninety. Whoa! What's the other part? I know. Um, two cars, student loans, personal loans. Um, my student loans are about one hundred and thirty. So I have my master's. What does your husband do for a living? He's in sales, so oh, he that's sells right. steel buildings. How much yeah, are your so cars worth? <laughs> um, we're a little upside down in one of them, but the loans on those are about forty thousand twenty each. Okay. And what's your household income? You um, took he the can average? make anywhere between, yeah, I'd say 60 for him, 70 if okay. he's doing really good. Because we're, Joe, I'm going to give this to George for, you got to follow the baby steps. You're familiar with the baby steps, yes? Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so here's the deal your husband is in sales in Colorado Springs, only making 60000 He needs to sell something that he can make a whole lot more money. You yeah. you are listen. You work yourself silly with the limited time you have and make twelve thousand dollars. That's like throwing a pebble in the ocean. He needs a <laughs> six figure sales job and working weekends and everything else. You need the stability uh-huh. and the benefits for where you are now. You guys got to clean up two hundred and fifty thousand of consumer debt. Sell the cars, everything we always say. But he needs to go make a whole lot more money. He's selling the wrong things and not enough of it. Yeah, we got a big hole wow. here, and we got to get that shovel to match. Up. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. I'm George. He's Ken. Thanks to all the folks in the booth. And you, America, will be back before you know it.